Next on this week's MLR Weekly, New England and Atlanta owner Eric Anderson, Seattle and USA rugby star Andrew Duratalo, and San Diego star Nate Augsburger, plus highlights, analysis, and opinion from Brian Ray, Dan Power, and Matt McCarthy. Yeah. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to this week's MLR Weekly as presented by Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in New York City, and we've got an enormous show for you this week. We've got stars, we've got owners, we've got pundits, we got all kinds of stuff. But before we bring in anybody, let's take a quick look back at what we had last weekend. In a jam-packed star fire stadium in Seattle, the Sea Wolves looked like they might run out of gas against a healthy San Diego Legion team who rose from the dead and their beach blankets to miraculously find themselves in the postseason. And they did not miss a beat as they scored the game's first try with less than three minutes ticked on the clock. The Seawolves didn't have a fly half, they said. Starfire didn't have a number 10, they said. But nobody told that to A.J. Alatimu, who was lethal from the tee, as was his ferocious pack on anybody in a Legion jersey. The Sabercats are next as the Seawolves dismantled the Legion 43-19 to to move on to the Western Finals. Down in the snake pit in Atlanta, the hometown Rattlers were favorites, and why not? They dismantled Rugby New York in Hoboken in their last matchup, 38-3. But New York, with an unconventional lineup, got out to an early lead and never looked back as Jason Emery did his best Dan Carter impersonation with a perfect night kicking for a banged-up Jack Hyten. New York moves on to face New England up in Quincy after winning 26 to 19. Phew! Take a quick break and come back with our special guests. Rugby Now, delivering premier brands to players and coaches. Our quality and heritage make for a winning presentation. Your orders are guaranteed same day shipping. Drop by our online store and follow us for exclusive content. RugbyNow.com selling or trading in your vehicle? She makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. Hey, don't forget to check out our bonus segment with Nate Augsburger, the USA Rugby and San Diego Legion star on YouTube. Hey everybody, welcome back for our favorite crappy Rugby show segment, mystery guest. Guess who he is? And you guys get to ask questions, and I come up with a couple of hints to give you, which I'm going to do right now. He is not a fly hat. He played this weekend in Major League Rugby, which eliminates a lot of teams for you guys, and he's very good in the open field. There you have it. Those are your questions. Uh, Brian, why don't you start us off with a question for the mystery guest? Were you playing on the road this past weekend? No. That was, <laughs> that was a no. It was a high-pitched no. Did you play for Seattle? Yes. Oh. Uh, does your first name rhyme with Duncan? No. Uh, do you play in the pack? I do indeed. Were you playing in the back row this weekend. What do you mean by back row? What do you mean? Uh, uh, were you a flanker on the weekend? Positive. Oh, do you wear number socks? Socks, bro. <laughs> Go, Brian. <laughs> Andrew Duratalo. Andrew Duratalo, come on in. Oh, Andrew, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you guys. How, how banged up are you from that game against the, uh, the San Diego Legion, who bolted oh to a, a lead in that match? Yeah, it's a very tough physical game. Um, yeah, I'm getting too old for it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're proving that you're not, though. You're, you're running down people from behind, uh, just inches from the try line. Yeah, you know, I should have made some Yeah. 
but yeah, it's 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 been good to actually, um, you know, get a run around with uh, with Seattle and obviously trying to hit um, a peak right now and trying to like play good rugby towards the end of the season. So, so do you get more pleasure tackling a Ma Nanu, a Chris Robshaw, or a Joe Peters? N- nobody, <laughs> to be honest. I try and just try, try and not to tackle. Guys. Well, try to get them to fold over yeah. uh, around the ruck. Um, but yeah, I prefer smaller dudes. Yeah, at this age, yeah, smaller guys. Yeah, Andrew, it's certainly a very tumultuous uh, build up uh, to this game. You guys, you know, didn't really know that you were going to be contesting for a playoff spot and then that huge game in LA. What was the conversation like this week heading into this game? I mean, first of all, you probably didn't even, I mean, when did you guys figure out that you were playing San Diego as opposed to? Uh, as opposed to, I guess it would have been Houston uh, in this game. And, and what was the conversation like heading into it? I was away, and then obviously they were saying there was going to be a home game. Um, and so I had to come back and do that because I was actually away uh, in classes. So it was good playing at home um, in front of the home crowd and especially just trying to play the way we've been playing the last couple of weeks, especially playing against Houston big physical side and um, they've been playing really well as, as well and then obviously the game against LA uh, which was a huge confidence booster for us because they um, obviously named a really strong side as well yeah. so I think after those two games that really set us up and gave us the confidence for this one. You've been gifted this second chance essentially See, like you said season was over had the sluggos on Mad Monday and then bam second chance so what's different this game against Houston? Um, I guess, you know, obviously it's the conference final. Uh, Houston playing at home, very big side as well. Um, there's a couple of older guys, I think, uh, in the Seattle squad, but a lot of exciting young talent. A lot of guys uh, that are current UC Eagles on that squad as well. And, um, you know, they're very experienced. I think when they came up here, um, obviously, you know, they beat us. Well, they scored within seven, so we couldn't get that bonus point. And then we had to do a job against LA, uh, which the boys ended up doing. Um, but yeah, we uh, I think we've lost we lost to them in the first game, and then the return match we won. But I guess you know it is the conference final, and it is I think a straight shot to I think whoever, especially on this uh, conference in this conference. Uh, has a very good chance of uh, yeah, taking it all the way, I feel. A lot of people m- might not know that you were a USA Rugby 7s and 15s star. Side question for you. Um, would you have preferred to win an Olympic gold or a Rugby World Cup? Uh, I think Rugby World Cup, yeah. Because really? the dream initially was... Mike Friday just know. started cursing you. Uh, and he's, watching, <laughs> he's watching live right now. <laughs> I, I, I prefer Rugby World Cup. I think that was the initial dream when I was younger, to play um, international 15s rugby and probably play in a World Cup. Well, you kind of mentioned that sevens link. I mean, you're going up against some of your old uh, friends. We don't know the lineup yet, but certainly Unufe and, and, and Leuta, and uh, in particular Danny Barrett, who you could be uh, having some Nemesis. connections with. Uh, are, you know, d- having played with those guys for so long, does that give you a little bit of insight in how to, I don't know, maybe secrets that, that Danny's got at the breakdown or maybe a way you can get under his skin a little with some a uh, little bit of banter? Yeah, I think, you know, Danny's very good over the ball, very strong ball carrier and uh he's one of those guys if you don't get up in his face early he'll run you over because <laughs> he's very fast as well and very physical um so you know yeah obviously been training with them for years and you know knowing their tendencies and what the strengths are the weaknesses are so um yeah definitely looking forward to playing uh all those guys hey last one for you you're talking a little bit about retirement is is this the last run is this the last dance for you in mlr or you think you got one more left in you uh i think i have one more left but not a whole season i could do a couple of games here and there so it's, i think it's a matter of just sitting down and like picking up yeah picking up the games that 
uh, I would be able to play. A lot of them would just be home games because traveling is brutal in this league, yeah. <laughs> especially when you go to the East Coast. Oh my gosh, I can never get it right. It's just so hard, especially with the, the day turnaround. Great. When you hang up the cleats, will you play rugby leisurely, as we say? And or what is your career path after you hang up the cleats? I'll probably get into cycling. I need to, because, yeah, I need to drop the weight because I wouldn't need it anymore. So I need to, yeah, just try and get my body right and, uh, yeah, try and pick up something else other than rugby. Something to do uh, with sports or being rugby, but not as a coach, probably a consultant or something like that along those lines. I think it's just, it would be too much if I tried to become a coach. I think of that just live in that life all over. So again. you have to travel to all the games. That's part exactly. of it. And I think, yeah, I wouldn't be able to like ride the highs and lows as well. Andrew, quick thoughts on the Eagles? Some A fix for them perhaps? Yeah, I think um, we could put an all-star team together and get them to play uh, the Eagles because I know they have that game against the French Barbarians. I think the Major we, League Rugby all-star team. Yeah. So, just, All yeah. right. Mr. Andrew Duratalo, thank you, Drew, for coming on. Much appreciated. Best of luck this weekend against Danny Barrett and those Houston Sabercats. Damn Dan Power. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. Been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle on West 36th Street. Hey, before I bring in our next guest, Mr. Eric Anderson, owner of the New England Free Jacks and pretty much the owner of the Atlanta Rattlers or part of the group that owns the Atlanta Raptors, just got to point out, I can't ask him or he can't answer certain questions about the Giltinis and the Gilgronis. So it's not like we're dodging it or I'm throwing softballs at him. It's just not going to happen. So I'm not going to waste the time. All right. So as as I just uh, said in the introduction there, we do have Mr. Eric Anderson. He is the big shot out of the New England Free Jacks. He's also uh, part of the Atlanta franchise, the the uh, Rattlers, and he's got a lot going on. Eric, we are now ending season five, uh, survived a pandemic, survived uh, some growing pains. What have we learned? What have we learned? Uh, I mean, a lot of really good things, which is the rugby community is amazing, right? So there was this question of would the rugby fans show up? How would they show up? How would they engage? Would they bring their friends? And so here on season five, especially coming out of a post-pandemic year, the answer is hell yeah. So in New England and all over the country, people are showing up in the stadiums and they're having a great time. So um, that's that's a really important lesson learned because when we were launching the league, and of course New England was an expansion franchise, but Mags had us in from the very beginning working with the original seven teams. So we had the benefit of watching the whole first season before we decided whether this was a good idea or not. So. That actually, so apparently, yeah, statistically, when you look back at some of the older leagues, even in American football, basketball, and otherwise, like, we're doing pretty well year five for, like, the level of ads and takes. Um, I won't attribute that to our, uh, how sophisticated we are as, as individual organizations, but perhaps to the sophistication of sport in general. So there's a lot of really good people with a lot of really good advice. There's a lot of good infrastructure out there. I would say a lot of the lessons we've seen play out in the last five years are things season one you talk to other sports team owners and they're, they're just nailing the list of here's where you probably will have problems. And you're like, we can avoid that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the advice. We'll totally avoid it. And it's like, no, you fall into every single pitfall. It happens anyway. Right. It totally happens. Like who are your partners? You know, you worry about parody in the league. It's, you know, engaging with your fans. Um, I'd say one of the things we've learned is perhaps there's a higher degree of skepticism among other sports team owners of, of the folks that we talk to collectively who just, the fans can be a pain in the ass. And I, I would say we have not experienced that in MLR yet. The USA 
can compete with an international rugby league. I think there's a question of whether we could have a league that would actually function and compete. Like, sort of, you think about the global rugby landscape and you've got Prem and the other leagues, where would MLR slot in? And uh, I think there's line of sight to Major League Rugby being the top of the global rugby pyramid uh, within the next decade. And we're just going to put one foot in front of the other. Ooh. And, uh, and, well, and you're, you're saying that we're not going to be, we're going to shed that tier two status. Is that what you're saying here, Mr. Anderson? No, we, yeah, we're going to make it like, that's the plan. I think I, well, I think the world cup coming in, uh, in 31 and 33 and, uh, the fans keep showing up, the sponsors keep showing up and everyone's engaged. It's the talent is there, right? We've got 330 million people in a huge yeah. talent pool. The market is there. Um, there's a chance you could be looking at a sport that's been around for nearly 200 years, right? We're coming up on the 200 year anniversary of rugby. And you, you could be thinking about North American rugby being the top of the global rugby pyramid. Um, cause we have the scale and we have the talent and we've got the fans. So let's, right. let's we are coming like up on that. the, we are coming up on the 200, the bicentennial of rugby. It's coming right up. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Hmm. All right. Well, you, when you say bicentennial, you can't think about, you can't not think about New England and, and, and Boston. And, and I don't know, there's might, there's might be some synergy here going on. Uh, and I am, I'm completely for sale. So keep that in mind. What do you say to those that slam their fists and say, this league is not propping up USA rugby. It's not creating Eagles. It's giving all these international players, these stars that might be at the end of their career to come over here and play instead of a young gun for America. What do you say to that? I, I think all of this talent and being in America between the, the players, but the coaching staff and everything that surrounds it is nothing but good for American players. And if, if we look at the skill difference between some of the players that come in from overseas versus uh, homegrown U S players, I think a lot of that is actually just attributable to when you think about a young athlete who's 18, 19, 20 years old, and they're sitting there dreaming about what they're going to do. There's four years ago, you, you, five years ago, you, you couldn't enter college and think about how you were going to play in a, in a professional league. And so you might think about a different sport. Um, the crop of folks who are just who just came out this year, right, the, the, the folks who came through the draft, they're the first crop of athletes that like literally this year in this draft, we'll see the first crop of who they actually saw the professional league. And then when they started, right. they started college. They're like, you know what? Maybe I will go out for, in many cases, it's a club rugby or something else, because there's a path to actually being a professional athlete. And I mean, when I talked to Pat and, and Nate, Pat Chung and, and Nate Abner, two of our other owners. He's just um, dropping New England Patriots names down. Well, actually, Nate two, Abner is, two of our wonderful part, owners. He's part yes. of the Giants now, pal. OK, or he was last. Yeah, All that's right. true. No, I mean, hey, Nate, Nate, Nate's willing to slum it in a lot of places because he's just a believer and a lover of the sport. I got two words for you, Eli Manning. That's what I have for you. He's a, he's a fine gentleman as well. What's wrong with okay. Eli? All I mean, right, just say he, he's taken a few games off us over the years, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Two and zero versus Brady in the yeah. Super Bowl, <laughs> but we're not talking about that right now. Oh so, yeah. So you you know, I, I get this all the time, and I'm not one of these people. And people always are surprised to hear because some or often surprised to hear me say, "I this is a this is a capitalistic society. This is a professional sport." I don't care if the guy is from Mars and he's green. If he can kick a drop goal from 50 meters on the run, sign him. Also, if you've got 13 teams, ladies and gentlemen, and you've got only two starters that are with American accents on that team, you take that and multiply it by two. That's 26 players with very good competition around very good professional players from overseas or wherever they're from getting that competition. The USA rugby pool just got infinitely better, way better than it's ever been in history for players to draw from. That's right. And if we're, if we're playing for a World Cup where you know, right, we're talking about 2031 now on our home turf, and, and, and the goal that we have is we're, we're going to see the USA in the finals. And, of course, the women in 33, they'll just win the whole thing, right? So that's, they, they've got – they're already solid, and we can put the whole program around then. So our expectations for the women in 33 is winning the whole thing. And for the men, let's see it in the finals, and let's have a shot at the title. I mean, a rugby World Cup. This is the third most attended sporting event yeah. in the world behind the Olympics and, and the Soccer World Cup. And so uh, the Rugby World Cup's a big deal coming to the United States in 2031. Rugby World Cup is coming. We know this. 20, 2031. World Rugby is now going to be involved yeah. in what goes on here some, somewhat. How much impetus do they have with you guys? And if they have any at all, when will it kick in? 
Um, so in our in my personal discussions, but I'd say in our league discussions with World Rugby and USA Rugby, it's more making sure we're in sync of these are the things that MLR is already doing. Here's all the things we're doing. And then identifying then the gap with USA Rugby of where are the things that we'd like to have. And so there's actually a lot of things that MLR is doing that are complementary or at least part of the roadmap for USAR. And so where those are aligned, fantastic. Um, where we can use World Rugby or USA Rugby resources or dollars to align with our fan base or or the player pool, fantastic. It might be more efficient for us to uh, us MLR and and our whole uh, program to align with their program. That'd be great. But there's the the thing that I keep telling people is there's no daylight between our interests, what we talk about among the owners and MLR, and what USA Rugby and World Rugby are saying. So in all these private conversations, as far as I can tell, we're completely on the same page. Um, Strategy-wise, and I think with largely around tactics, um, there's never enough money to go around. But what people don't realize is, even if we're talking about half a billion dollars or more coming into the global rugby pyramid in the next um, eight, nine years in the lead up to the, to the first World Cup that's here, the Men's World Cup, um, that will be dwarfed by the amount of money that's spent by MLR developing rugby in the United States. Um, and, and right now, like any nascent sport, every dollar that a fan spends on rugby is, is a dollar that's basically being put back into rugby. It's, it's not like you've got wealthy owners that are cashing checks and taking money out of the system. How long of a runway do you guys collectively have to burn cash before you need to, to break even or turn a profit? And what gets you to what gets you to that point of of turning a profit? So the way the league is set up, as I'm sure your your viewers know, is it's a single entity, right? So the 13 owners all own the the same entity. So we own our pro rata piece of that. So each individual, the strength of the league is actually it's not each individual team is not the weakest link. It's actually like th- there's one team here and there uh, can have problems along the way, but we can we can help support each other in the collective, which you, you've seen happen. Um, you know, the way Atlanta ended up being supported by one of our organizations last year um, was really because of, of the the truly unfortunate and tragic death of of Marcus Calloway. And and that man. was totally a good man, gr- incredible organization. So the success of that organization. Right. So um, uh, there were some of us that were able to come together and, and one of our affiliated entities was able to step in and make sure that rugby ATL had a great season. And that's behind Amanda Windsor White. She came in. As, as the first female GM here in the league, and the president. And so she's done a phenomenal job of building an organization down there. That's an example of the strength of the league, that we have that, that ability to step in when there is an unfortunate situation like that. And, and you'll con- continue to see that happening uh, over time. So it is really about the solvency of the entire league across all the owners and that commitment to rugby, I think more holistically, that is the key thing here, not an individual owner. In three years, do we see... Uh, owners owning multiple uh, o- multiple ownership or pieces of other teams, or do you want to try to weed it out? Or yeah, that I mean, that's where I would like to see it be. But it's you know we'll, we'll see where it settles down to. I mean, I'm not sure if you talked to any other owners that that believe otherwise. I, I think we're generally in alignment on that. You love to see one well, team. I've one calls owner. into LA and Austin, but I haven't heard back yet. Okay, well, let me know if they respond. 2023 and 2024, how many teams? Uh, let's see, 13, maybe going to 14 next year. Uh, uh, and then 15 going to 16. It's it's hard, like Major League so, Soccer. Ladies and gentlemen, he just gave us information that teams won't be disappearing between now and next year. You see what I did there, right? You see what I did? I I, I fully... But I, we still will I, have, I can uh, tell you my own personal opinion. Yes, I believe we will have no teams disappearing between this year and next year, I think. Well, there you go. As far as so, right. adding one or more strategically... Um, Major League Soccer, right, whenever you're adding one team at a time and you get, you know, that extra team in the league, when it's small, it's kind of, we see this this year with, with, with our split between the East and the West. Um, think about adding one team per year all the way up to the World Cup. But you could, there are years you could add two and you could do it differently. So I generally methodical growth to put rugby in the key cities where we have great fans and great engagement with a really strong rugby community and they can then plug into the rest of the league, that'd be great. Is the franchise fee too ambitious right now as it stands? Oh, not at all. So, so the franchise fee, it's uh, you actually own a piece of the entire league. And that's, uh, that, I think that's a really important thing that perhaps people don't understand. So yeah, you're, you're buying equity in the league in addition to your local geography. All right, final question. Who's hoisting the shield this year in 2022? New England Free Jacks, of course. Thank you, Mr. Eric Anderson. Much appreciated and best of luck to you. 
And let me say, Matt, thank you for all of your commentary this season and your engagement and stuff. And so we have to forgive you for being a Rooney fan, of course. Uh, Rooney uh, doesn't well. exist. There's no more Rooney. It's just Rugby New York. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're on message. Thanks, Thanks Matt. For your time. See you soon. Gentlemen, we're here in the uh, the final two weeks of Major League Rugby 2022, year five, and it's pretty cool. We got some great stories coming out of the West, certainly the Wild West, and we have Houston hosting the Sea Wolves, who are sizzling. Those Sea Wolves, Brian Ray. I'm a little bit surprised, and you know, taken aback by how easily, really, they beat San Diego. <laughs> they beat. Uh, uh, Houston in that last update, they played it at home, but they did win that last game that they played against. And the other game was like two points different. So I'm expecting another fantastic uh, matchup here. Although, you know, that extra uh, the couple weeks, I'm sure Houston hasn't been sitting on a beach chilling. They've been practicing and resting. And for a guy like Danny Barrett, uh, who's been beaten up all season, I think the rest is going to play a huge uh, role for him. So I'm uh, I'm still leaning towards Houston in this one at home, but I think it's going to be a, a cracking game. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think Houston wins this game just purely on the fact that they are fresher. Um, they're more experienced. I like Seattle in this one. And no longer Rooney is playing the Flapjackals in Quincy, Massachusetts. Brian, I know that you're a huge fan of the of the Flapjackals. Who's going to win this one? New York? I still like New England. This one, they had the week off. That was a fizz, even though it was kind of you know, uh, I don't know, a little bit sloppy with ATL. ATL wasn't really at their best in that game. It was still a physical match. There's still bumps and bruises. New England's had that extra week to rest and really, you know, spend whatever time they needed looking at video and everything. And, and Waka will be firing, I'm sure, at home for this one. This is a huge game for them. It's, it's everything, right? So uh, I, I think New England pulls this one out. Uh, I think it's going to be a great match, though, just like the just like the West game. Both of these games are going to be great. I think New England win it. I think they've been the best team in Major League Rugby all year. And uh, realistically now, with the revelations of the last two weeks, I feel like they've got the passage to a championship. New York's back line, that was the first time their vaunted back line played together at their positions that they're familiar with, right? So the three All Blacks played together in the previous in the match against New England, but Andy Ellis was playing 10. He wasn't playing nine. You had Heighton back, but Heighton's not kicking right now, which is an interesting dynamic, especially if it comes close. He's, if, he's had some leg issues. Maybe he'll be healthy by, by game time. The benches in these games are as important as the starters, one can argue. you got, you know, uh, Tui Loma think... and Brakely coming off the bench last week against Atlanta. I mean, that's pretty significant, isn't it? What do you uh, What do I know? <laughs> On that note, guys, final thoughts, because we're out of time. Great weekend. Great weekend. I can't wait. One from the West, one from the East. Just as the Lord Killer Brew intended it, when he uh, created MLR on the seventh day, he will rest and he will have two teams left. Fingers crossed, nothing happens in the next two weeks. We'll have two teams left. So look forward to the final. Big Fox, they uh, got it on Big Fox. So Big Fox. Uh, East Coast, lock it down. Thanks, New England. That's a noon kickoff, that final, right? Noon Eastern. Mm, early for that Western team. It, it yeah. is Seattle. Yeah, they're used to the NFL doing that. Brian, final thought. Yeah, so I got uh, both my picks wrong last week, so definitely don't bet on the teams that I picked. Uh, you know, the exciting thing is, you know, we're coming up to the championship final, but then all these guys who've been watching playing Major League Rugby all season are going to come together and play with the Eagles. Eagles squad just named 22 out of 30 from MLR. They're going to play against Chile. That's super fun as well. It's almost like, you know, the all-star American team from MLR come together. So uh, some really exciting days ahead. And, yeah, really looking forward to see some of those. Now that they've named the team, they will see some interesting uh, collision between players selected uh, this kind of weekend. Uh, my final thought is, why have a playoff game at 10 p.m. on the East Coast on a Sunday night? I think we could do a little bit better on that one. I'm sitting up watching that game, and I'm trying not to nod off after a long weekend of keg chugs and, you know, dizzy bats and all that stuff. I got to stay up and watch a game two hours. It takes a lot, you know, living the life here that we're living, right? Maybe a little earlier. But it was a great match anyway, and it kept me awake because it was so good. On that note, I want to thank you guys, Mr. Dan Power, Mr. Brian Ray. I also want to thank our guest, Mr. Eric Anderson, 
of the New England Free Jacks. And make sure you check out that bonus bonus interview with Nate Augsburger of the San Diego Legion. Thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including the Rugby Odds and the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. And please join our American Red Cross blood donor team.